he was only in the business a short period of time. Well, relatively speaking, you were as well, yet you said you were already laying out his matches. Was this something that Dusty said to you, like help him with his matches, or was it just something you took on on your own and no one said anything because you actually did a good job with it? Yeah. I mean, Dusty never said, okay, Cornette, just lay out all his matches, but here's the thing. And I mean, they knew I'd been doing a lot of the same thing with the Midnight Express matches because – as I've talked about before, uh, and we've everybody's talked about the the job guys were not always the most experienced or smoothest workers that we got either on Crockett's TVs or on the Atlanta TV or whatever. And for every Mike Jackson and George South, there was a lot of guys that you had to lead by the hand. And we found that instead of just going in and beating them up, but to shit looking bad because them not knowing what was coming that we would go the other direction and it was my job to get there, see who we got. I paid attention to all the guys, what they could do and what they couldn't do, or more importantly, what, what they shouldn't be doing and what you might could do with them. And then I'd apply and I had, you know, the fucking Rolodex in my head of all the spots that we could do. And, and when, when George South was, was our, one of our opponents, I'd give him and Bobby a fucking 12 phase high spot to start the thing out with just because I like to watch him do it. But then we'd have a cutoff spot, a double team, fucking blind tag or whatever. And then we would prep the guys on how to take two or three or four of the moves or whatever we we're going to be able to do. And then the finish, and I did the same thing with Bubba because I, he didn't know how to do anything. The opponents didn't know how to do anything. Well, let me rephrase that. He he had no experience with doing anything except what the few things he'd done, a la the Bubba Spike. It was never done again. But when he told me about the Bubba Slam, because that was Randy Mulkey that took that, and that was fucking beautiful. It was the, the origination of Abyss's black hole slam or that whole spinning thing. But it, it, one morning, Bubba said, how about if I shoot Randy Mulkey off – and when he comes at me, I catch him around the chest and he kicks his legs out and I just kind of drive him down. I'm like, yeah, do that. And it, it was no, it was it, he wasn't even wrestling then. It was because Randy Mulkey was getting beat up by the Midnight Express and he rolls out on the floor and I'm taunting him and Randy shoves me down. And to illustrate that Bubba will destroy anybody that that touches me. Bubba then snaps, grabs him, throws him in the ring, shoots him off, gives him the Bubba slam. He lays there unconscious. We lose the match by disqualification, whatever, but it got Bubba over. And sometimes he could do it. He wouldn't even lose his hat. It just, it looks so cool. So that, but that kind of stuff, when he'd come up with something, then we'd prep the job guy, or I'd come up with some things to make him look like Frankenstein and the villagers. And they weren't long, complicated matches because nobody needed to be doing any long, complicated stuff at that point. He just needed to be awesome and unstoppable. So they never asked me to do it specifically, but I think they knew I was going to because I'd already been doing it with the Midnights. Okay, and Stan Lane. I doubt Jimmy Hart ever tried to do something. I doubt Jackie Fargo visited him in Jerry Jarrett's bathtub. So this was a new thing for him, having a manager lay out a match or lay out high spots How did he take to what the Midnight Express were already doing, the position he was dropped into beyond being in the Midnight Express, the way you guys were already conducting yourselves and doing things, you know, on the road or or preparing for matches? He was he was great with it because and and he actually did an interview one time where he said he was kind of wandering aimlessly in Florida because Kern had retired and was going to go into real estate and Stan was in singles and the territory was almost ready to fold up and get bought by Crockett. What well, did 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 just get bought by Crockett? It was ready to fold up. Yeah. Stan was making like three hundred bucks a week, and so all of a sudden he gets a chance to be half of the hottest tag team in the country again. And he knew me and Bobby from, and who can not like Bobby, but he knew us from, from Memphis and we'd worked together before all, all that time. So he was excited and anxious to not only to, um, to be a part of it, but to, you know, at first he needed to learn what we were doing and then he wanted to get some of his own stuff in, but he donated some fabs jackets and, you know, et cetera. So there was no problem at all. He was happy to get spot and we all got along from the start. Um, and as far as it, 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 having to, it, it, he wouldn't have looked to Jimmy Hart to lay out his matches, but Jimmy Hart was not a guy that laid out matches or finishes, especially at least at the time when he worked with Stan. But he, since he knew that I had uh, uh, the book for one thing, I had a book of every finish we'd ever done. So he's like, okay, who am I to say, well, you know, let me come up with this. 
although he 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 had input based on his different way of doing things and then we all three started coming up with our own shit so as gradually we left some of you know the stuff we'd done with Dennis behind but he you know and also it was actually a relief to the boys when when we'd go to a show where either Dusty wasn't there, or he just sent word midnight over. And, and th- then, okay, well, what do we want to do? Well, then I would just say, hey, how about what we did in Indianapolis? Or how about what we did in Des Moines? Or let's just slip this over like this or whatever. So they just started listening to me because I remembered all the shit that we were told to do in the past and could bring it up when it was uh, necessary or maybe twist it a little on my own. So it was something else they didn't have to do. But the one the one time in Greensboro when we we had done a finish with the Road Warriors, and then we had a match with like the Fantastics or Rock and Roll or whatever, and Dusty told to do the same. It was one of those two referee finishes, do the same finish. And I went to him. I said, "Dream us," you know, because it very you know humbly, like just calling your attention to this, sir. Um, you know, we did that here last month. He said, "That's okay, kid." It was with different people, <laughs> which was. Actually, probably on the the quality control on those once in a lifetime finishes that were happening three or four times a year in the, in the buildings probably should have been a little stricter yeah, on Dusty's part. To fast forward a little bit ahead to '88, when Dusty comes to you and says, "Are you okay with me bringing in Paulie and the Midnight Express, the the original Midnight Express?" And whether your blessing was needed or not, he at least well, went to you. And- no, no, I, it was the other way around. Because he didn't – Dusty at that point did not give a shit whether he ever saw the original Midnight Express or not. They were not even on his radar. He was not watching Vern's TV or whatever the fuck. I was one desperate for somebody for us to work with after Tully and Arn left and those big fucking checks that we'd been getting evaporated. And we had to do something, and it was my idea to bring them that I pitched to Dusty, but Dusty made sure to tell me and Bobby – that all right, I won't bring Dennis in unless you guys say so because he he ran out on us before, and we said no nah, because I'd already talked to Paul E right and then got assurances that everybody wanted to come, and I said no, we we want you to do this for us because we need somebody to work with and this thing can be good, and that's why he did it. 